I lived there um, for 11 years uh, without moving, though we moved uh, once in the town of Lake Bend. And, and then after that, I think there was about 10 years of continuous movement for me. I went away to college and lived in a different room each year at, at, in Northfield. Uh, each year, of course, I would return home for the summer to uh, live, with my, live with my parents. And then uh, when I graduated, um, I too then moved home to bless my parents with my presence for another year while I tried to find full-time work, which I never found. So I, I was one of those college graduates that lived in the basement of their parents' house. That was me for a year before I went to before I went to seminary in St. Paul. Uh, after seminary, I moved a total of seven times by we, Emily and I seven times in four years. Then we moved back to then we moved back to Montana, we moved to Missoula, lived there for three years, and then when I moved here uh, to Dawson in 1997, many, maybe some of you remember this, we moved into the Methodist of the Presbyterian Church. We lived there for about 11 months before moving on to Chestnut Street, uh, where we now currently reside. So according, at least to the Census Bureau, I'm pretty typical. I'm a pretty typical American. Uh, and, and this is the way for Americans, I think. Ever since, really, World War II, uh, I think, um, when that war seemed to give permission for individuals and families to move in search of greener pastures or move in search of uh, a better, better jobs. Just by way of contrast, um, it's interesting to uh, read that the average Canadian citizen moves 10 times in a lifetime. The average citizen in Great Britain, they move five times in a lifetime. And the average Japanese citizen, they move only four times on average in their lifetime. So 14 moves is the American average. Uh, that means that there are many people who move less than that, as well as that there are many people that move more than that as, as well. About 40 million Americans move once or more each year. And most of those uh, moves are related to job losses or job changes. So the most geographically stable Americans, the ones who move the least, are the working class individuals with families who have good marketable skills. They move less than the average than the average. But for the most part, we Americans are on the move. So we're very familiar with that, with that picture. Well, Jesus, too, is on the move. And if you read through the Gospel of Mark, if you read through any of the Gospels, Jesus doesn't stay too long in one place. He's always moving. He's going. He's traveling. He's, he's moving from community to community. From the very beginning of the Gospels, in utero, he's moving right from Nazareth, the district of Galilee, to Bethlehem, for the census ordered by Caesar Augustus to be born, right? That's the first story. He had, Jesus had to move during that time. And then as a small child, he's forced to move by the contract of King Herod, that, that contract that King Herod put out on Jesus to kill him. So Jesus, like Moses, finds himself moving to Egypt, where he remains until his parents decide, with the help of a dream, that it's safe to return to Galilee. However, there is still enough danger in Bethlehem that they settle in Nazareth instead, where Jesus is raised to adult input, and he learns the trade of his father. He learns how to become a carpenter. So finally, when the moment is right, Jesus goes out to the Jordan to be commissioned for his work by both John the Baptist and God. And then he moves again. He moves or is moved out into the wilderness for 40 days to be tempted by the devil, but also as Mark described it, to be waited upon by angels. So Jesus is, is always moving. Perhaps by our 21st century American standards, this is not a, a lot of movement, but certainly for a Palestinian Jew of the first century, Jesus is most decidedly on the move. And Jesus is making his move, such as it is among outsiders. 
Jesus is making his move into difficult places and into challenging situations. All Jesus' wandering, all of his travels, all of his, his moves is an image uh, that is developing here in the Gospels is that here Jesus is someone who's not interested in settling down where it is easy or where it is comfortable. Jesus is moving into challenging places in difficult circumstances. Our Gospel lesson this morning begins with the information that John, John the Baptist, had been arrested. And if you remember, just a couple of weeks ago, Jesus was baptized by John, and that means in terms of the world of Jewish rabbis that Jesus became a follower of John the Baptist. So if the leader is in trouble, guess what? The followers are also in trouble. Jesus was in trouble when he started following John the Baptist, but still he moved out into the wilderness to be baptized by him. And Jesus continues to be on the move. This time it's the move to the Sea of Galilee to call his first disciples. So the image, as we think about all these moves of Jesus, the image that comes to mind, that comes into focus, is, is this Jesus who is not just on the move, but this Jesus who is moving into difficult and challenging circumstances. Case in point, these fishermen that Jesus calls. I think it's easy to have an image of the lives of Peter, Andrew, John, and James before Jesus comes along to call them as his disciples, you know, and we might have this rustic kind of homey image of, of these strong men, you know, they're fishermen, and they're, they're loving, and they're providing for their families, they're out working hard on the Sea of Galilee, and while that all may be true, something else is going on here as well. Something about the Roman Empire and its habit of squeezing every drop of lifeblood out of its citizens, and certainly out of the peasants who lived there. Did you know that in the ancient world, fishing was under control of the government? Fishing was under control of the Roman Empire. These men did not work for themselves. They were employees, either of the royal family or of wealthy landlords. They were paid either with cash or with fish after they turned over their cash, all of it, to their employers. And before they could even drop a net into the Sea of Galilee, fishermen paid a tax in order to be permitted to fish. A tax on their catch as much as 40%. How much are you taxed by the government? I don't think it's 40%. Fishermen were taxed 40% before they even lay their nets down. And so Jesus calling fishermen is more than just calling them away from their families. It also involves a break from the powers that be, the wealthy or the government, and into a new power, the reign of God or the reign of heaven that is being ushered in, that Jesus has been called to usher in. So Jesus does not do the safe thing. He, he never does the safe thing. Quite the opposite, Jesus does the risky thing. And he tweaks the powers that be by disrupting the food supply chain, even in this small way by calling these four men to come and fall. Jesus is not interested in doing the safe thing. He's not interested in doing the comfortable thing. He is on the move with something far more compelling. He is proclaiming the good news of God and that God's kingdom is here. And so there's movement, always movement. Jesus is on the move. He's going throughout Galilee to preach and to proclaim and to heal. And he's not sitting in one place. He's not waiting for the people to hear about him from their neighbors. Though by the middle of chapter 1 in Mark, his fame is already spreading. But that's only happening because Jesus and his friends and his followers are moving. They are moving out. They are going out and about, moving among the people, talking to them, listening to them. They are taking on themselves the people's pain and their problems seriously. This is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. 
So I can't help believing that there's something very important for us here in this gospel story. As you think about all of your moves in life, and not necessarily just your physical moves, but maybe the places that God has called you to, or maybe the places where life has found you, those difficult places, those challenging places, we think about those moves in our lives and how we handle those moves and how Christ has strengthened us to persevere and to get through those challenging and those difficult times. And so we think about all of the moves and all the ways in which God is calling you personally to be present and to be with, to move with others who are suffering or going through challenging and difficult circumstances. I can't help believing that there's something very important for us here in all of these moves of Jesus. I can't help but believe that there's something very important here about our ministry as a church, as a congregation, as the people of Grace Lutheran Church. To be followers of Jesus, we have to get up and we have to be always on the move. It's not enough to say, well, we have this great church and we have this wonderful ministry and we have great people that are here that have joined us. Even though all of that is true, yes, we do have a great church. Yes, we do have great people that are with us in ministry. But there's more to it than that. If Jesus is our model, if we take seriously that his call to us is to follow him, then I think one of the places we have to follow him is out the doors of the church. Then we have to get up and go out into the world where people are hurting and where people are helpless and where people are hopeless. We need to get up and to go out in the world. That is not to say that we don't want to engage in ministry of teaching and proclamation here in this building. Of course we do. But my guess is that if Jesus were to walk the streets of Dawson, or to walk the streets of Boy, to walk the streets of our hometown looking for the least and the lost, he probably would find them here in this building. He would find them where people are hurting, maybe in the hospital or maybe in the care center. Maybe even in the bars. Maybe Jesus would find people in the bars. Maybe even in our own homes. At our own tables. But wherever Jesus would be, that is where we are called to be as well. So that is our call to be the person who is willing to share in another's pain. To go into those difficult places and those challenging circumstances in life as Jesus did. And that's something we can do anywhere. And when we're doing it, we're showing what the kingdom of heaven looks like. What the kingdom of God looks like. Jesus is always on the move. He's always on the move, sharing the kingdom of heaven. And the question is, will you do that as well? Will you answer that call as well? May it be so.